Here's a very short video that I just want to recap the second fundamental theorem of calculus. This is the section that we do the second day of section 4.4. Not a very difficult section, but because a couple times problems do show up from it, I want to make sure that you're not surprised when you see questions on the test and you're not, un you're not unsure on what to do. So second fundamental theorem of calculus, essentially what it says is when you are asked to derive an integral, you get what you started with, which should make sense. The derivatives and integrals are undo each other. You think of them almost like inverses. So so when you take the derivative of something that's integrated, you get that original function. Now, as far as notation, a couple things to notice. A lot of times what they'll do is the function that you're being asked to integrate, they'll use letter t. And then when you're asked to um, plug your boundaries in or take the derivative, they'll use the letter x. It's basically just to not overuse one variable, not to have everything in x's or everything in t's. The very straightforward problems are like the one you see here right at first. The derivative of the integral of 3 to x of the um, square root of 1 minus t cubed, that is nothing more than taking your variable, putting it in the place of t, and writing down what you started with. That's done. We don't have to write anything else. We don't need any plus c's. We don't have to plug any other boundaries in. Those are the most simplistic. You have the derivative. You have the integral. The only thing that changes is your answer should be written in terms of x, because if you see the d dx, that's saying the derivative in terms of x, that's it. Then we have slightly more complicated versions of the second fundamental theorem of calculus. The uh, AP writers love to do questions like the second one on here, which is testing your ability to not only use the theorem, but also to see what happens with different types of boundaries. So again, when I take the derivative of an integral, it cancels. However, the kind of extended version of the, sec of the second fundamental theorem of calculus says, when we take our boundaries and we put them in for t, so I have the sine of 5x and the cosine of 5x, we also have to multiply by the derivative of the boundary, so the derivative of 5x. The derivative of 5x is 5. Now you might be saying, well, why didn't I do that in the first one? Well, technically you didn't, you did. The derivative of x was 1. You just didn't have to worry about it. The other issue is your bottom boundary is also variable. So I have to think of top minus bottom boundary, just like the original FTC, and say minus. Now I'm going to put 3x in for my t's. So I'll have the sine of 3x and the cosine of 3x. And I have to consider the derivative of 3x, the derivative of the boundary, which is 3. So we get a lot longer looking answer whenever we're applying this theorem and my boundaries of integration are both variable and both having different derivatives. You'll, again, look back to this first one you did and say, well, why didn't we deal with the lower boundary? Well, the reason we didn't deal with the lower boundary here is if I put the lower boundary in and then turn around and multiply by the derivative of the boundary, the derivative of 3 is 0. So if you deal with that, then you're just automatically going to cancel anything you wrote down because it has a 0 derivative. So you have to worry about boundaries that are variable. You do not, when you apply the second fundamental theorem of calculus, have to worry about constant boundaries because when you derive them, you get zero. So this shows you two examples, neither of which are hard, but like the most basic application of the second fundamental theorem, and then a slightly more difficult one where you have to take into account both boundaries and the derivatives of both boundaries.